This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk through this 2018 Salem FSX model 260 RT. Okay. I'm on the door side of the trailer, moving towards the rear. And of course, you have um, your rear door, the garage door, um, which is pretty self explanatory. It has counterbalance springs on it, so it's not heavy at all. It's just uh, uh, a one handed deal. Um, you have stabilizer jacks on each corner. They take a three-quarter inch socket or a three-quarter inch crank. Most people use a socket these days. Outside speakers, you have a power awning. Excuse my camera work, I'm sorry. Power awning with LED light strip. Um, your steps fold into the trailer, so if you're on uneven terrain, you can, let me get around here so you can see. Hopefully I can, I can have a hard time seeing the monitor as usual in the sunlight. All right, so if you want to adjust the length of the legs, you just pull this pin out here. There's one on each side, and adjust it to the length that you need it. This is a antenna out from the TV, from the antenna, and this is power, so you can set a TV out here if you choose to. All righty. This, this hook up here is just strictly for a... a um, solar batter battery charger so it's just a solar panel to charge your battery it's an option um, this particular one is made by Furion so it, this plug is set up to accept their their panel but it's just just in case you want a battery charger it will not run your trailer or anything like that it just charges the battery okay you have your hitch in here your spare tire uh, we'll show you how the hitch just works when uh, when you come to pick it up okay Two um, LP tanks. You got a deep cycle marine battery here. You have um, a power tongue jack here. It's up and down, and the other one switches a light. Okay. Now, if this ever fails, there's a crank that comes with it that you can put it inside here, or you can use a socket on a wrench, which is probably faster, um, or a drill for that matter. Um, and you can crank this manually if it happens to fail. So you can always get yourself out of trouble hitching and unhitching. It, no matter what. All right, let me open this one and see what we got in here. Okay, this is the crank I just told you about. The small crank right there. That's for the power tongue jack in case it fails. This crank is for the stabilizers. It's a three-quarter inch hex, obviously. So um, most people will will either buy a ready-made attachment for your drill or just make one up out of parts with a three-quarter inch six-point socket. This is a sprayer that hooks to a sprayer port. Okay, you got in four wheel covers uh, to cover up your lug nuts. Um, low point drains, it's the lowest point of the plumbing. Okay, now uh, these are your dump valves. Okay, so they're open right now, I'll just close them so we can see. Okay, so this one obviously is the gray, this one is the black. The black is for the black tank, which holds toilet water and waste. The gray is for the gray tank, which is sink and shower water, okay? So you put your dump hose on here, put it the other end in the dump station. Then you're going to pull the black one first and dump the black tank first. Then you'll dump the, the gray tank, just because the gray water is cleaner than the black water and it'll help to wash things out a little bit, okay? But this has a, this has a uh, feature, a, a black tank flush, so if you, you would keep your black tank valve open. It's important to have it open before you turn the water on. Then you would hook up your hose at the dump station right here. Turn it on, it'll spray the inside of your black tank. It'll spray off the sensors and just generally spray the inside of the tank to, to get it cleaner than it would be just by normally dumping it. So it's a good feature and it's really good to do every every time. Sometimes if you if the dump station doesn't have a hose that's available, it's, it shouldn't. It should always have a hose, but you know, you can get by not doing it, but it's every time you can I would do it. It's very it's a good thing, okay? So this is how you get water to the trailer. Uh, the most common way is the city water connection, so you're just gonna hook up city water, turn it on, and your, your trailer's pressurized, ready to go. If you go to a campground with campsites that don't have plumbing, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here. You've got an onboard fresh water tank, you fill it up, and then you can use the onboard pump to pump the water. So it'll, everything will function just like you have city water, but you have to carry the water with you. That gives you a lot of more options because some of the best state parks, for example, are the older ones and they don't have plumbing on a lot of them. So 
Okay, uh, this is uh, your, where that spray port hooks up to that I just told you about, the blue coiled one. Okay. This is your condensation drain for your refrigerator. So you always want to have this hanging out just like it is so it drains to the outside. This is your water heater on the outside. Okay, it works on gas. Um, the only thing to know is that, um, let me get this cleaned off here, excuse me. The only thing to know is that um, this, is a, this is your, your uh, um, this is a vent here to, to, to vent the tank. And of course, this is your plug. This is an inch and a sixteenth socket, six point. Um, there's an anode rod on the back of this, so it's long. It's about maybe eight or ten inches long. Keep that in mind. But uh, the most important thing is never vent it or remove the plug while you have hot water in it. You always got to make sure that it's cooled down. I know that's pretty basic stuff, but you'd be surprised. Um, but you obviously can scold yourself or worse if you uh, do that. So you do want to vent it before you pull the plug out because if not, because there's pressure inside. If not, it'll come, this will come shooting out of there like a cannonball and uh, with a gallon of water behind it. But if you uh, let it cool down, it's no problem. You just vent it there and then take it out, okay? The switch to operate it is inside. Okay, this is your, your um, 30 foot power cord. It's a 30 amp cord, so um, it can handle everything in the trailer. This is just campground cable or satellite through to the inside. Okay, that's of course a vent for your garage. Um, coming back this way, uh, I forgot to tell you, this is the vent for the range hood right here. Um, now if you run the range hood fan, you always want to open this up like this so it flaps freely. There's a baffle here. You want it to flap freely like that so it vents to the outside. But otherwise you're just going to keep it shut. Okay. But if you are venting, you want to open that up. Okay, back to where we started. Uh, the thing to know that this, this tells us, this housing up here tells us this is pre-wired for a backup camera. It takes a Furion camera so if you're going to get one, you can, we do sell them here, but no matter where you get it from, make sure you get the proper one that fits in that housing. It's all pre-wired. Um, also, while we're looking up, you have to inspect your roof, and you have to inspect it at least three times a season, figure every 90 days of use. So uh, you go up there, you look at all the sealant, and you check for cracking or separation, and uh, sometime, some year, you're going to see some of that. So when you do, you have it taken care of immediately. You don't have to redo your whole roof, obviously. You just touch up the area that needs to be touched up. Okay, so here we go inside. All right, so you have a, a fireplace that is, a, that is also a, um, a, uh, a heater, basically, a space heater. It's got a fan in it, so you can set the fan speed low and high and off. You can set the thermostat on it. There's a timer, and you can also adjust the appearance of the flame. This works on 110 AC, so if you just want to take the chill out of the room, uh, you don't have to use up your LP. You can just use this if you got campground, regular campground power, okay? Um, your radio, uh, basically you can stream off a USB, right? Uh, you can hook up wirelessly with Bluetooth and stream uh, from your phone to your tablet. Two, you have two speaker zones, one and two. One is inside the trailer, two is on the outside of the trailer. So it does everything you need for camp, and you can also patch it through to a TV here. There's a backer plate here, of course. Then you've got your hookups here. Okay. Um, this here, let's see what we got here. Looks like this switch is between, let me make sure here, yeah. This switch switches between the microwave and the fireplace. You can't run both of them at the same time. So right now it's set up to run the, the uh, furnace, or the, I don't want to call it a furnace, the, the space heater, the fireplace, um, but if I, if I were to switch it, you'll see the, you can see the light go on, and you can see that, so that sends power to the microwave, okay? Also, this is your thermostat for your furnace. It's very simple. You just turn it this way. It goes on. Maybe you can hear that. When you click it off, it's got to click like that. Uh, as soon as you do that, the flame goes out, but it'll still cycle through for a uh, a minute or two until it purges itself. Okay, that's normal. The controls for the air conditioner are right on the, the ceiling assembly. All right. Your, your, uh, let's see where we're at here. Your, 
Um, refrigerator is a gas absorption refrigerator, so that means it'll run on 110 AC or LP gas. So what you do is you're obviously going to turn it on, and then you're going to select auto. Auto means electric. The reason they call it auto is because it automatically seeks out electricity, and if it can't find it, it'll automatically switch over to gas. But electricity takes parameters, so it's always going to look for 110 AC. Uh, it does not run on 12 volt, just 110 AC. Um, if you want to run it dedicated to gas, you can do it that way when you're pulling it. But even if you don't, if you unplug it from the electric from the 110 AC, it'll automatically switch over to gas anyway. The other thing to know about this is to set the temperature. This piece here is called a thermistor. You can see it's got a cable on it. Basically, you want to slide this all the way up, about right like that, so the wire is taut. The, the thermistor itself is, floats freely inside this little, this, black, this beige bracket here. That's all it is, is a clip to hold it on. I could pull it off and pull the thermistor out. It's just a cylinder on the end of that wire. But if that ever happens, if you ever pull loose, you just tuck it back in and put it back on the fin. It's, it's not permanently attached. It floats freely in there, okay? So the higher you go with that, the cooler it gets in the refrigerator. Generally speaking, you're going to have it up all the way, as high as you can go with it. Your uh, range, you just you have to light with a lighter. This is the range fan that I told you about. Remember what I told you about the baffle on the outside? Light. Microwave works like any other microwave. All the plugs are wired through a GFCI. This is right here, so keep that in mind that if, uh, if you're using the plug on the outside and it pops, it's reset here. Um, this device here is your power converter. So what this does is converts 110 AC over to 12 volt DC. So you got 110 a AC here, regular household circuit breakers. Then that power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side. You got 12 volt fuses here. Um, they are all both labeled. You can tell which which all, what all these breakers and fuses are for. If the, any of these fuses will, were, were to blow, they'll light up, and you can actually see it through this perforation here. All right. Um, also, this is a battery tender, so if you're plugged into shore power, it'll send so much energy your battery up front needs, and it will always keep it charged. If it's charged, it'll just trickle a couple amps up to it. If it's low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs to keep it, or get it and keep it charged. So uh, it's, a, it's also a charger slash tender, whichever you prefer. The table here collapses. On the other side, there's a, let me show you here, it's kind of, there's a yellow, Let's see where we're at here. Put my bearing straight here. Okay. 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 There's a latch right here. It's hard to see because it's so dark. And you can flip the latch and collapse the table. So it, it's um it drops down and then you can put it on these cleats here. I'm sorry about my camera work here. One man show here. You can put it on these cleats here on both sides and then use the cushion to fill it in and make it into another bed if you choose to. Also you can fold these up. Of course these couches can fold up and you, you attach them to the D-rings on the wall and then you can drive your dirt bike or, or um, four-wheelers or whatever you take with you, road bike. Um, the door obviously has, it has railing around it, fencing. It's all self-explanatory. We can show you that when you get here. Very basic, very simple. Okay. Now there's also a, uh, should be a LP carbon monoxide detector here somewhere that I have to show you. I just have to find, oh, it's right down here. So it's down there. If you hear that go off, it's detected carbon dioxide or LP gas and you want to take everybody outside obviously uh, leave the door open shut the shut the gas off at the front and then figure out what's going on the sink and the shower work like any other sink and shower the toilet the thing to remember about the toilet is you can't use it dry you have to use it with um, some chemical and about a gallon of water in it we're still cleaning it here so we got sawdust here So, basically, so when you get to the campground, your black tank is empty. So you're going to plug in and hook up your water. Then you come in here and you'll put your chemical right in the bowl. Whichever brand you use, you put a dose of chemical. Then you'll step on the pedal, and because we got, we'll hook up the water, water will come swirling out. And you're just going to continue to stand on the flush pedal down there until about a gallon or so of water goes in there. 
The lack tank is directly below. There's no way to tell exactly what a gallon or so of water is, but you just use common sense. You've got to have some water in it and chemical to start using it. You never use it dry or you'll regret it. You'll only do it one time. Um, your escape window right here, very simple, but I'll show you. You're just going to go like this, uh, push it all the way through, grab a hold of this red tab, pull the screen out, and out you go. Okay. All right. There's storage under the bed, like a foot locker. Always run the fan in the bathroom with the shower because you want to pull the humidity out. Okay, I think we've covered it. Um, pretty much, we can go over anything else. You can talk to your salesman and when you come to pick it up, but that's basically it. So, um, one last thing, this is your antenna right here. It does not go up and down, it just rotates. So you can rotate it with this knob to tune it in, okay? All right, well, thanks for buying your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, and remember what I told you about uh, inspecting the roof seals and the seals on the side of the trailer. Every, any place you see caulk uh, or sealant from the factory, you're going to always inspect that. It just takes a half hour of your time. It's well worth it. Do it every 90 days of use. And um, also, obviously, you have to be winterized in the... Uh, in the fall so it doesn't freeze during the winter and all the plumbing has to be replaced with antifreeze all the water has to be replaced with antifreeze so make sure you take care of that also okay thank you very much